Hello and welcome to a La Salle scenario. You can see it's a very basic setup of the scenery. The two sort of yellowy looking areas are farms which slow down movement, difficult terrain. And we've got the two woods, obvious what they are. Now, what is interesting, along this bottom edge, which appears as a road, you will see three small buildings. They are the objectives for the attacker who will be coming from the top of the table. Now, the twist in this one is it's a fighting receipt, uh, retreat. So we're not going to stay there to the last man defending these. Oh, no. After a few turns, the defender takes off one unit each turn. Then after six full turns each, so 12 turns if you like, one of the objectives can be removed. So the attacker can be right on the edge of winning the game, about to take that objective, and you abandon it. And then turn seven, abandon the second one. Turn uh, eight, or the 16th turn, the last turn of the game, you've, if they haven't been taken yet, you've won the game as defender. Otherwise the attacker must have taken an objective. The attacker has a break point, Defender clearly hasn't. So here's another look at the battlefield. The problems here, I'll just let you in that uh, the Bavarians are going to be attacking from the top. They've got a lot of very powerful artillery. And from their deployment zone, which is just up to the edge of that wood, more or less, the artillery can almost reach the road. So really, that entire central area, if they mass the artillery, that central area is... is uh, ground that can't be occupied by the army at the bottom here, the Prussians. So, very powerful, but the difficulty is, and you'll see this as the game goes on, the artillery can't fire over friendly troops, and due to the layout of the terrain, it's quite difficult to thread a route through there. And wherever you put the artillery, it seems that you end up um, with them not being able to shoot due to the infantry or cavalry moving in front of them. So it's a tricky one for attacker and defender. Yeah, so we have tried this uh, scenario a couple of times. It's been really tough for the attackers just to get there in time or win at all. Um, so we started taking off defenders at the end of the second round. So turn four in my... Uh, uh, the second round after the second defender's second turn. So going through, through deployment, attacker deploys first. So you can see his infantry... Uh, I don't know what is it, division or whatever it is in this game. Behind the woods on the top left. Now, I've done that before when I'm the attacker, because you can go centre or round the side. But I've found that does cost you time, because you have to go round that wood. Cavalry in the centre, and then the other infantry uh, corps, or division, over on the far side, threatening to come on the right-hand edge. Or are they? Are they going to cut through between the farm and the wood? So I put defenders out to try and uh, match against that. I've decided to use cavalry on the far left. So I've only got the two divisions, effectively. Although I can make a third by using the general as a commander. So I've decided one or two units of cavalry on the far left should be able to stop all that infantry, force them into square. I've got the option to cut across. I've deployed everything else quite a long way back in the centre because I want to stay out of artillery range. He's going to have to advance at least two turns, I think, to get them into range. So it's buying me time, and they're in march column, so I can zoot around. And my I've opted for two units of light troops which have deployed in the wood on the far right, uh, with one unit of infantry supporting them. Artillery's hiding at the back there, not sure where they want to go, where they want them blown up before they start. And obviously the horse artillery's lurking in with the cavalry. So, a quick run through the units involved. Top left-hand corner of the Saxon Bavarian uh, army, courtesy of Roger, his lovely collection. As you can see there, four battalions uh, behind the wood, top left. There's the cavalry centre with two lots of horse artillery. Yeah, two lots of those. Only three cavalry units. Uh, my defenders, the Prussians, have got four. And then we got two more lots of artillery in the centre, really commanding the field. And the rest of the command on the far right. And there you see them, five battalions, threatening to come round the edge and take the bottom right-hand corner objective. Or cut through into the centre, take the centre objective. Difficult to tell at this stage. I guess keeping his options open. And I just run around to the other side of the table just for a second so you can see uh, those two light to, uh, battalions I've got defending that wood with one regular battalion supporting on the far flank. Got to play honest there and keep that objective covered. And I've got my army waiting in column of march in the centre. Don't know where to go yet. <laughs> Staying out of range. 
and there's my cavalry, which I think will be really usefully placed there, because it's quite a strong cavalry division with the horse artillery. They should have hold up that infantry there, and then threaten to come into the centre or draw out from the centre. So that's my plan at the moment. I have to wait and see which way he's coming. So there's a quick aerial shot back behind the defenders' lines where I'll be taking all the pictures from, either from the centre or this left corner. And you see I've pushed my cavalry up a little bit. Maybe I could have even deployed the horse artillery with a view to scooting off. Um, and you see the, the attack starts. A couple of battalions coming around the left side of the wood as we look. And cavalry coming through the centre there. And the attack on the far right. So keeping all three options open at the moment. And immediately the horse artillery is deployed in the centre at the top, which has caused a problem because my cavalry was sitting there in columns looking for where to go. And they're going to get raked by that horse artillery, so they've had to disperse a bit, uh, some to the middle, and a couple of units, just enough to hold up that attack round the far left. And uh, take their chances and just be a nuisance is the plan for those. Uh, rest more or less a waiting game. I put uh, the irregulars, wherever the land there into line because they can't do much once the enemy gets near. So on to turn two. Yeah, so my horse artillery deployed behind this farm uh, while my cavalry scoots off to somewhere safer in the centre and immediately the heavy artillery at the top of the table has opened up and done three hits which causes them to uh, limber up and the cavalry just behind only a range of one of the artillery batteries, thank goodness, gets the bounce through uh, from one and uh, managed to escape that. So there's a the horse artillery limbered up. So there goes my threat and the cavalry's looking for something to hide. There's not many places. Yeah, the enemy horse artillery of course opened up on the cavalry. Didn't do any damage on the front one which is a bonus. And you can see the red markers there. You'll see those throughout the game to show hits make it easier for everyone. Uh, one pip on the guys at the back which hopefully they can rally off. What the cavalry at the front are doing though is forcing those infantry into square in the top corner and halting that advance. And this game, don't forget, is against the clock, so anything you do to delay, they're doing their job. Just got to take on that horse artillery, unfortunately. So you can see there, the Saxon cavalry has moved now, because movement comes after the shooting, so they've moved in front of his horse artillery with a view to uh, driving off my cavalry to free up his infantry that's now stuck in the top corner. He yeah, has a better view of that, lining up the charges. Um, and I was thinking for my turn, if I do charge his cavalry, I might beat them. But even if I do, <laughs> they're going to be parked right in front of his horse artillery and getting a dose of canister. So a tricky bit of manoeuvring. I want to keep the threat going on his infantry in the top corner. Um, but I can't fight where I am and take on the horse artillery. At least his horse artillery is blocked from shooting for a turn. So I'm going to take the option just to move back a bit. And draw him out and keep my cavalry on the table a bit longer. Yeah, so you have to remember LaSalle's quite a low-level game. These are small engagements, you know, just, uh, what is it, seven or eight battalions aside, rather than the grand battles you get in something like Blue Shear. So the little white arrows show my cavalry's backed away, out of charge range, just to gain some time. Maybe a bit recklessly, the infantry guarding that were detached to guard this objective in the bottom left to move forward to lend some fire support to the cavalry. Might be a bit reckless. On the right-hand side, you can see the um, advance on the far right, starting to sweep around the field and you can see the columns are coming round past the farm and because I angled my guys in the wood it's just out of range so he's sneaking through to join up for a big attack in the middle with cavalry coming and more infantry through the centre so it's starting to look a little bit dangerous and as I said mentioned before previous scenarios um, it's been a bit too difficult for the attackers to, to, to we change the balance a little bit <clears throat> and I immediately have to start taking units off from round two, which is this round. So I'm pointing at that unit of land at the back. They're my least useful at the moment. And uh, they're going to be coming off. And I've parked my artillery, uh, my horse artillery there in a very aggressive position. Taking a bit of a gamble, really, because this artillery kind of a blast at them. So there they were, gone, as we say in Wales. The land had come off, and you can see the artillery lined up to try and put some pressure on his column coming around the farm. And anything else, this, this is the, the brave spot for them. I'm hoping they're going to get screened by his infantry. But the building threw me a little bit, because the building isn't really there, it's just scenery. His artillery got an unobstructed view of my artillery now, and can combine their fire. So turn three, you see my cavalry <laughs> reversing right back up near the edge of the table. So they're going to have to turn and fight at some point. And I'll be right. So the white arrows show where my units have moved. I've straightened the guys in the wood in the top right hand corner so they can now shoot at that column 
get them in range at least. So they have to make tests for changes in formation, things like that. And then the biggest luck ever. Eight dice combined from those two batteries of artillery shooting at me. I rolled seven misses, only one hit does nothing to my artillery, which gets to stand there for a turn. What a stroke of luck. Uh, three hits out of the eight would have meant they had to limber up. Five would have destroyed them. If I'd really thought it through, I probably wouldn't even put them there, but they got away with it. Right, so you can see there, Saxon Cavalry pushing out. Uh, all three of them coming in to take on my two units of cavalry. And the infantry looking a bit exposed in line out there. And in the centre, he's pushing through for a big attack. Hoping to join up with the guys joining from the right. So pressure's starting to build. Uh, you can see in the centre, coming through on the far right, you can see, now this was quite crucial, the unit in column trying to get past the farm attempted to change formation, but they're now in range of my guys in the wood. They failed their discipline test. They are now stuck there in column, and my artillery is looking at them, and the guys in the wood are looking at them. So I've got a great target there. The only problem is it means I'm shooting at them, I'm not doing anything about the column coming right through the centre. Yep, so the horse artillery open up, plus the guys in the wood open up. They're in column, double dice the artillery. Uh, loads of dice, and uh, I did only one pip that follows through, another pip the guys next to them, and the guys next to them. So quite an effective uh, round of firing, and you notice my artillery has found a great place to deploy, because they're hidden from his artillery by the wood, and they've got a perfect shot at those advancing columns. Uh, I've done one damage already, and they're in a good spot, though the horse artillery's looking a little bit exposed, especially with all that artillery lining up to shoot again, and I'm thinking, oh well, I'm there, I just want to shoot. If they get battered, I'll just take them off, I suppose. Yeah, so it's a little bit tricky. The infantry got the square, obviously, and you can see the white arrow should be a red arrow because they're going to try and charge uh, the guys by the wood. And my plan was for the other cavalry to fall back to keep their threat on the infantry and not, you know, just buy time. But then it's explained to me by uh, Roger rather generously that if they charge it on their own, his cavalry that are supporting can try and intercept and you'll get like two cavalry against one. So I'm fairly committed to charging both cavalry in. And just see how my luck goes, really. Yeah, you can see from the arrow there, I've moved up another unit of cavalry to support. Which means I've got three against three. His infantry's a long way away. I'm thinking this flank's okay. And I've got to take another unit off. And I've taken this Landwehr cavalry from the back. I can't see them getting into things. Ah, it's tough. That's the tough thing with this scenario. You have to start taking your own units off. Because they're all useful, you know. It's a stretch. And I don't really know where the big attack's going to be yet. Okay, so the Saxon shooting and the artillery at the top has another pop at my horse artillery and fails. Amazing luck for me. Uh, so I get to fire my horse artillery again. And the guys in the woods uh, taking some shooting now from that advancing columns. Just taking the one pip, so they're just going to have to weather it and live there. And I'm thinking if they really get badly beaten up, eventually they're going to be coming off. But at the moment they're in a great spot, shooting into that uh, march column, which is again a fail to change formation. So the luck really going with me at the moment. Yeah, so you see confirmation, a puff of smoke with the artillery, but no damage. Um, the next nearest target in the arc, as it were, is his infantry, and they do take a hit. Well, that could have been a lot worse. Alright, so we've bitten the bullet here. Here's the charge you talked about. So my cavalry's gone in, with the other cavalry supporting to stop the intercept charge. I'm rolling eight dice against eight dice, and oh, look at that. The red dice of the Saxons, only one hit, hitting on fives and sixes. Look how many ones are there. I think it's six out of eight dice are ones. Incredible. Um, all I need was two hits and, and got those uh, with a couple of spears. And, and that's them gone. So that's a real bonus. A one turn charge against fresh cavalry and beat them. The yellow markers where they were. So that really takes the wind out the sails of this flank. So you can see what's done immediately is the cavalry's pushed on down. I got my infantry in square, and the other cavalry have charged to commit me, and he's turned some artillery, so the victorious cavalry are now facing horse artillery. Well, at least they're facing that way, not this way, but, um, well, what are they going to do? Yeah, so there you can see his horse artillery deploying at above, as you can see, and the second battery is starting to line up against his infantry, and his columns are coming through the middle. Horse artillery looking very exposed. I think what's the point of limbering them up and getting them out there, really? It's going to take another turn to deploy. They'll never get such a good spot as they are now. And almost wherever they go, they're going to be a target. So that's why I can actually use the defender rules to my advantage. They can fire one more round of firing into that column. Nicely juicy target. And then they're going to be the next unit taken off. 
Back over to the right hand flank, you can see the far right unit starting to come through, and this bottleneck by the farm is really causing a problem now for um, my opponent. So they're getting shot at from the field and the horse artillery, and it's a real bottleneck. And on to turn four, and attacker's reactions. And shooting, of course, we jump straight to the movement, <coughs> far right to move a bit further forwards. Starting to engage my unit in line, it's going to try and hold both those back. I have got these guard down the bottom right hand corner reserve in march column waiting to see if they need it on the right or the left still not sure they are two in a great spot and the guys in the wood take the pip as you can see so here comes the left flank uh he's charged uh the cavalry that i've moved up in support and they've actually retired as you can see the yellow line there they've re retreated i'm just buying time over here and these other cavalry's coming in while well, my square is just going to look at them really and all the time i'm thinking those infantry in the top left hand corner is this their chance to start moving? I don't think they do. Yeah, so there's a beautiful sight to the horse artillery opening up on that column again and the unit next to them, putting pits on both with supporting fire from the woods. With a bit of luck, I could have actually done a lot more damage and maybe even destroyed one of those. And the attack columns are being hit by the artillery on the right. Yeah, that's them firing away. And you see all through the woods, everything's shooting. Good turn for me. Just picking up a pit. All the way across the board, really. Nothing devastating, but no bad misses either. Apart from the far right. Well, that end column got away without being hit. Yeah, so the yellow arrow on the left. I've evaded again. I turned them in my turn, so they'd have a spot to evade back down the table. And the white arrow shows. And forcing my cavalry out of range of his horse artillery for a one-turn charge. But... Well, where else can they go? <laughs> it's going to have to hope they survive the canister. And then overrun the guns, that's the plan. And my cavalry had reserve, see the red marker on the bottom? They've charged in. Can they repeat the performance of their friends at the top? Yeah, so I brought up my column uh, to then some fire support to the guys defending the uh, objective. Because now this is where you see the problem. His artillery is being screened by his advancing columns. Very difficult for him to get shots off. You might get one artillery battery in. Very difficult to get two and very difficult to combine the two on the same thing. Over on the right flank, he's finally, <laughs> finally the unit next to the farm is going to shake out into a different formation and try and move. So the trouble is, every time he failed that discipline test, it didn't move either. So it's become a bit of a bottleneck. Um, well, I'm just holding my ground. If things get too hot, they're going to be coming off at some point. But for now, yeah, the horse artillery, they've got no chance of surviving. They've done a great job, though. They really have had uh, nine lives. And we're on to turn five, so we're halfway through the game. Eight turns to take the objective, so we're way away. So there's a quick overview shot of the battlefield. Uh, on the right, pretty stationary, but on the left you see the cavalry taking on the guns and the other cavalry charging on against that fresh unit against them. They're equal levels. Um, as I always say, plenty of medals if you're in the cavalry in my armies, in my games, but um, not the very long life expectancy. And here's an interesting camera shot, different angle to show in the distance you can see the two batteries of artillery trying to line up on these guys. You can hit enough of them to get both batteries firing on this unit, but only one can transfer onto the unit next to them, so I'm going to hit something. And would you believe it, um, Roger only went and rolled another load of rocks. Uh, I think I needed four hits this time to beat the two that he rolled and got them. And this cavalry have also broken through. Also, the horse artillery did one hit on the charging cavalry. Uh, they took one hit previously from the melee, which we'd forgotten about. So they're actually on two hits now, so not quite so powerful. But hopefully they can take out that horse artillery. That would be a, such a bonus. Yeah, so so worried was uh, Roger about this cavalry charge coming through the horse artillery that he actually ran away with the other horse artillery or deployed them to the rear. Let's put it that way. Let's be generous. Because if I'd beaten the, like, the, um, the horse artillery in the charge... They would have been behind the other horse artillery. So there we are. Let's see who blinks first. And also the top right corner, you see his artillery that's behind, of course. Yeah, so my turn to take some hits in the wood on the right-hand flank, all the way across. But the point here now is that the guys who are supposed to be coming funneling through to join in the assault through the center are formed up to enter a shooting match with the guys in the wood. And I'm feeling a bit relieved in a way because... Even if you take that wood, it's going to take a long time. It's hard to hit them in the wood. They're light infantry. You've got to bat your way through the wood and march through it. I, I just can't see him getting back into the game in time. And I know Roger is very frustrated. Um, we discussed it afterwards. At this point, 
where he just couldn't get through that gap, really messed up his plans because he did not have the overwhelming force in the centre. And also the horrible dice on the left flank. So it's a bit of desperation here, really, with the guys on the far right charging through because they have to take the objective and there'd be no defender within four base widths. So the unit I've got on the right-hand side of the wood is within four, and I've got this reserve guard down the bottom corner. So this is looking a tough nut to crack as well, but... Uh, you know, what can you do in this situation? He's got to take one of the objectives. So you've got to just push for all three and hope at this point. Yes, yeah, so the columns charge in on the far right. I've elected to stand and shoot, just do their best. And you can see that reserve column just waiting to join the party. Yes, yeah, so the assault through the centre is not looking nearly as scary now. Two against two. And by fortune, that cavalry melee, I've actually got a cavalry unit that can come and help if I really need to. So once again, the far left, charge my cavalry, and once again, they evade. I don't want to engage there. I'm just going to keep playing for time. Uh, all this time, the, the infantry in the top left-hand corner haven't really advanced anywhere. And you see my cavalry um, has taken a shot from the shooting of his uh, horse artillery and are about to charge in. Yeah, and you see the centre. And one of our house modifications to the rules is that line infantry can shoot at all the targets in their fire line. So they get attack on the centre unit and a combined attack. So it'll be six dice against the unit on the left as well. We did this as to to stop columns just being able to run through lines, really. Um, you, you go one way or the other. This balance seems to work. Yes, yeah, so you see the artillery blazing away, the melee forming on the right. Here's a close-up of that. As you can see, two battalions crashing in, done a pip on each on the shooting on the way in. Um, so work out how that goes. Yeah, I managed to roll two hits with all my dice. Ah, but Roger only managed three, which is not doubling the defender, so they are not destroyed. I try to remember exactly how many dice Roger rolled, but 11, I think I rolled about eight, something like that. But anyway, they've managed to survive. We take damage, of course, because we did lose the melee, but all we have to do is fall back. They're not destroyed, which buys even more time. Yeah, and as we said before, the um, cavalry charging the guns on strength with two hits already. They took a third hit on the way in. Oh, and we come back to the centre again. And, yeah, because we did so much shooting damage on those units, another couple of pips on both of them. And the artillery's joining in. It's in the perfect spot. Thought, what the heck? Con's going to charge. <laughs> let's, let's just let's drive them out rather than just stand by the objective. And just as a little Brucey bonus, I've got my cavalry that won the melee sweeping around to help in the centre if needed. And I've also got to remember to keep those within four of this bottom left-hand left objective just in case. And the square within four. And his infantry's still a long way away, top left-hand corner. So, mm, unless my square blows up and the cavalry take an undefended objective, I'm hoping this flank's okay. Okay, yeah. So, actually, um, yeah, uh, Roger's opted to uh, retire, uh, whatever the word is, fall back, rather than take the charge head-on, and he's shot back and done a unit on the other one. Okay, so you see the yellow arrow, the withdrawal, and the charge. And red pips from the shooting, which my guys would take one as well. That might be from the artillery. Not exactly sure. <laughs> and this is really rubbing salt in it now. A real cheeky one. Uh, my cavalry there were well, outclassed. They're like, um, I, I keep calling them Ulans because they've got lances where, but they're the poor quality ones. So they've evaded, evaded, evaded successfully each time, which is a 50 50 roll anyway. And then um, just to go trapped in the corner, they're like, nah, we're off. <laughs> We've done our job. We slowed up the infantry. Uh, the square can look after itself. So, see ya. Oop, gone. Right, turn six. So, this is where I can now take off an objective. Three turns to go. Six, seven, eight, and we're done. So, this is the reaction to the charge. So, I get five dice hitting on fives and sixes. And he gets, I think it was two dice, yeah, two dice hit with both. If he'd only hit with one... Uh, we'd have wiped out the guns and we'd have been behind. In it. I think the game was over. But we didn't. And uh, we got to take the pip as well. So I'm sorry, those guys. Not good for them. Yeah, they withdraw, but <laughs> it's uh, a fairly easy shot for the horse artillery. But again, they're shooting them. They're not shooting something else. And his horse artillery, the other one, withdrew. Which, as it turned out, wasn't necessary. And they could have had another couple of rounds of shooting. Could be crucial there. So in the center, I'm now just shooting away. Artillery's enfilading from the right. These two infantry are blasting them up, so that attack is dying. And only now the unit that's been trapped by the farm with all that traffic jam 
is going to come around to try and help. They're going to get there too late, coming in piecemeal. And they're just going to get fed to the cannons as well, really, if they do come any further. So there we are. So that's one unit gone. <laughs> yeah, I'll put the dice on there, because I think I needed, like, two hits from six dice. And got one hit. So I didn't destroy the battalion on the edge of that uh, farmed field, which is down to one hit left. <laughs> there we go. I've had plenty of good luck this game. I am not complaining. So as you can see on the far right-hand flank, the battalion's fallen back right to the objective. They're being charged again. Two hits this time. And he wasn't enough. I think Roger was about five. He's finally getting some reasonable dice. So he's on top of that objective. Um, it doesn't count as captured because I've got my reserve column and the guys in the wood both within four. And more bad news to come, of course, because it's turn six and I can take an objective off. <laughs> so which one do you think I'm taking? <laughs> and there it goes. Oh, it's so frustrating for the attack. You finally get there. Hooray! Oh, they've all gone. Yeah. Turn seven. We're almost there. Last two turns. Objectives coming off. Objectives need to be taken. So there's an overall the situation. The right hand flanks from out the game now. The objective mark has gone. I could just oh, I could just pick them off the wood if I wanted to, couldn't I? Anyway, there the center as attack has really been stopped. He's got a unit hanging on the edge of that farm with one hit left on them. Another unit coming through to run the gauntlet to the cannons. And on the left hand um objective, you see the squares there standing off against that cavalry. But I'm also thinking there is a chance, there's always a chance that the cavalry will break the square. I think it's something like the infantry get eight dice and the cavalry get two or something ridiculous. But, you know, they could still win, theoretically. And I don't need my cavalry to help in the centre. The infantry's done a great job, so I'll just keep those within four, just to be sure. So it looks pretty home and dry, and I relaxed a bit. And, yeah, very nearly messed up what should be an easy win, if you look at it. So you can see there's horse artillery that, that uh, was already deployed, just pivoted a bit. And uh, that's a house rule as well, we let them pivot a bit. Otherwise, spend the whole game dodging fire lanes, it gets a bit silly. And they've done a pip on the square. Now, this is where I almost made another mistake. Because the infantry is withdrawn into the yellow arrow by the farm there. And I'm so tempted to charge in and just wipe them out. Uh, but there's this other column coming through. And he's getting hit with his artillery on my infantry left by the objective marker. And if he can soften them up or even destroy them, that column in the middle will march through and take the objective and win the game. So I was yeah, hang <laughs> Luckily, I saw that just in time and actually moved my attack column back or just shot in them. I kept within four of the objective anyway. That was the crucial thing there. So the right-hand side... I've just moved my um, reserve in just to block and save the cannons. I like them firing. Any chance in the middle they can take them out. Uh, this, I said, the objective's gone anyway. I'm just trying to keep them away from the centre and keep my guns shooting. Oh my god. Finally going to do something, I guess? Oh, yeah, and I've got the units in the woods now. You can have the woods. Thank you very much. Well played, boys. You can go home. And I take this left-hand objective off marker off. Now this is a mistake you can't really see here because what Roger had managed to do, I made it quite casually and did one hit on the square, was he got everything just about lined up on this square and threw something, I think it was 12 dice. Um, now, you know, if he got I think 7 hits and it's hitting on 4s, so you can get 7 hits of 12 dice, it's 50-50. You know, you should get 6, you say, one up or one down is not a big difference. And that would have blasted them away. And his cavalry sneakily moved in within four, which would have counted as holding the objective. If I had moved that cavalry away, that would have been the game lost. As it turned out, my cavalry are within four. I think they are. <laughs> I think I put them in four. But anyway, didn't do enough damage on the square. Oh, that's right, because it's double dice against the square. That was the thing. It's double dice when you're shooting against a square. So I made a lot of dice this turn. And for next turn, you know, everything lined up to blast it away. So that turn moving away with his horse artillery, which could have maybe blasted his square up, might have been crucial. Yeah, so you can see now that uh, that objective's gone anyway. So it's just the center to worry about. And that's why I still almost mess it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually show dice, but it does kind of sum up how miserable uh, Roger's artillery shooting was throughout this game. 
and that is his advantage. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it almost spoils the game a bit, you know, when someone just rolls badly in so many crucial roles, you know, the crucial ones. That's the thing. I had a few bad roles, but they didn't really matter. They were the crucial ones. The last turn. It's turn eight. Yeah, you can see the white arrow on the still on the table there. I did remember to move those back and <laughs> bring them in four, because it could have been a bit of uh, artillery fire and charge on that last unit defending the middle objective and still lost from this situation. That would have been terrible. That would be one of those nightmares you just remember for years to mess it up from there. So hey, just out of spite, really, all that artillery is going to blast away at this square again just to fail to kill him, I think. <laughs> Oh no, no, that's my hand coming in, I think I'm thinking right. Okay, well, we'll just take them off then, since they're such sitting ducks. I'll deny you the pleasure. Yeah, so any chances that that uh, column might have of a sneak charge to steal the game was short-lived, because the artillery and infantry opened up and just leveled them. And then with a bounce through the artillery onto the unit next to the farm, which just needs one more hit to destroy it, look at that, my turn to roll a shed load of ones and twos and miss them. But, I mean, you know, it's not exactly a crucial role, is it? But it would have been nice. And the guard! <laughs> Roger's thinking, why not? Just well charge him in. Take on my guard. Just for the... Take some with you. And there you go. My guard's managed to do three hits. Is that enough for them to stay on the field after doing, well, basically nothing all game? It was. <laughs> Only three hits coming the other way, in fact. So, um, it's not even a defeat. So there you go. Yeah, so the overall situation at the end there, the um, objectives are held. Just about held all three of them, as it turned out. But um, it was a very close game. The real deciding factor, unfortunately, was some of those terrible artillery dice for the Saxons, I have to admit this, at their crucial points as well. For example, my horse artillery surviving two rounds of shooting from his two units of uh, foot artillery. You know, he needed three hits for them to have to um, uh, limber up, but they were still there to keep shooting at his column, which refused to change formation. I mean, as it turned out, he just well carried on moving in column and march, because they're going to get shot anyway. Uh, changing formation with poorer troops under fire. Because the thing was, when I started the game, I'd angled my guys in the woods to give them a better field of fire, I thought. But what it did do was leave just enough gap to get through. But once I corrected that, they were within shooting range and, I don't know, pushed on, or maybe they wouldn't have done that anyway. So the right flank never really got going. Uh, the centre would have been interesting if those columns that were basically fainting to the far right, as Roger said, they were never going to go down there. They're always going to come down, pouring down the centre. Now, I did have my artillery well placed, and my guard in reserve, so that would have been a good fight. It would have been a different game. And then the left flank, of course, where I basically did two charges, two successes. And not only that, he tried to evade on both occasions and failed. So, um, whereas I evaded, I think, three times in a row and got them off. So that, yeah, <laughs> one of those days. I also feel watching it, though, that um, somehow that artillery is so devastating. It's, it's such a tricky one to get them firing. Um when also still trying to get all your columns attacking, because through the centre seems to be the main push, and then you can fan out either way. Um, but as soon as you do that, you block the artillery. I think there might be a way of getting the artillery firing along a diagonal or something. I don't know. Um, it's what I'd like to have a go at as the attacker. I have tried before and failed. <laughs> but with the same forces, all that artillery... So I think when I attacked, I was up against the artillery, and I had to kind of go around the edges, and it just proved to be too far. Oh, my army got too spread out, and um, yeah, it just didn't work. I lost, lost horribly. So um, we'll have another go at that some other time. The, the next scenario we're going to do, though, is the building the bridge. I don't know if you've seen that before. I think I've got reports up somewhere where you have escalating attack force chasing um, some units that are trying to retreat over a river. But to get to the retreat, they've got to build the bridge first. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. It's quite a clever race against time. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please leave comments. Love to hear what people have to say, good or bad. Um, nice to get some feedback. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, until the next time, keep rolling.